We have some amazing cast members uh, from the cast of magicians that we're going to bring out here. Let's bring out this amazing cast. You may have seen him most recently as Guillermo on What We Do in the Shadows, uh, but we fell in love with him first on The Magicians as Benedict Pickwick. Please give it up for Harvey Ian. Hi. <laughs> What's up, Harvey? Um, you know this uh, next gentleman from Mad Men and Frasier, uh, but we know and love him as Josh from The Magicians. Please give it up for Trevor Einhorn. Woo! Hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, What's Harvey. Up, How's it going? Uh, you may have seen her on Chicago PD, uh, but we know her as Julia. Please give it up for Stella Maeve. Woo. <laughs> there she is. What's up, Stella? Yeah, you can applaud for each other, I guess, here. We can't yeah. hear the virtual applause going on out there, but you can applaud for each other. Uh, from Paranormal Activity and Five Second Films, um, she is Alice, and we know her as Olivia Taylor Dudley. Hey, Olivia. All right, you might have seen this next, next actor from Towelhead and Crossing Over. Not queen, but high king, Margot. Please give it up for Summer Bishop. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it, Trevor. Loving it. Um, and last but certainly not least, let's hear it for this actor from Teeth. Uh, we know and love him as Elliot from The Magicians. Please give it up for Hale Appleman. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Hi. <laughs> hey everybody thank you and welcome um first of all uh congratulations i know we are as fans are super sad to see it go uh, but congratulations on uh the five seasons just ending up uh shout out to you all what a beautiful way um to go out you know on your own terms on the sci-fi network so um well done and congratulations to you all Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. What I'd love to start off with, and then we have a ton of fan questions coming in uh, in Twitter, on Twitch, and on Facebook Live, is, ha I mean, we just had the finale uh, just a few weeks ago um, before kind of all this craziness happens. Has, have you had a chance to let it set in? Um, has it set in at all that, that the show, for right now, and I'm sure we'll get to this as well, um, could be potentially over and ended? Have you, have you had the realization come about yet? I just found out now after you just told me. <laughs> I had no idea. Mike, thank you for sharing the news. I guess I have to reevaluate my life now. It's over, brother. Uh, okay. Um, no, I mean, we, we we did a very similar sort of like group Zoom uh, for like the last episode. And we, you know, when you're working with a group of people for five years, you build it sort of like a family aspect. So we've been constantly checking in with each other. And I think once the episode aired, once the final episode aired, it kind of felt a little more real. Anytime that there isn't one more thing to look forward to, uh, which is why Wizard World was so perfect. Another opportunity to uh, see everybody. So, you know, I feel lucky that we've had the series, but it, I'm also uh, constantly reflecting on the show and the job that we had. Well said, Trevor. Well said, Trevor. Great. Well said. I'm just waiting for the audience to sit down right now. This is the craziest standing ovation <laughs> no we've ever had. There's it's still so arts. crazy. There's Guys, still sit down. <laughs> oh, sit down. Uh, what about the rest of you all? Have, has, it, has it sunk in? Has it sunk in that you, we've had your uh, potentially your series finale, at least, at least as we know it? I cried a lot when the last episode aired. At first, I was sort of... Uh, like not accepting of it or not it wasn't I wasn't internalizing it yet and then when the last episode aired I was just like a wreck and I usually don't cry so it was it was a weird night there was a lot of tears yeah I think I cried the that last day a lot I, d I didn't want it to hit me I mean it's been five years of our life and like Trevor said and like we're all family and and not getting to see the crew up in Vancouver was heartbreaking and I miss them so much so it's all that kind of stuff that started sinking in once the last episode aired but you know here we are again <laughs> <laughs> i feel like the distant cousin who came to visit you guys like over holiday break we don't really like <laughs> it often, but like you guys are so welcoming so when it was over i was like oh i'm not gonna be able to go for christmas dinner like it's like <laughs> Because every time I went up there, the last time I went up there, like Trevor and I, like we're just having a hoot and hail and everyone is just always so welcoming. So it was sad. Like when it ended, I was just like, oh no, like, am I not going to go over and say hello? You know, no, we will. We will. Because here we are right now. 
I guess we, we, we love you, Harvey, and we love we love your character. And that, that's the great thing about the show. And then I want to get um, to Stella and Hale, obviously, but is that everyone, every character is important, right? Even the side characters um, are just import, as important as the main characters to the story. And that's, I think, why people identify with it so much. So even though you had a, a short stint there, it was a memorable one. So thank you. Um, but yeah, um, Hale, Stella, how are you feeling now that, that it's quote unquote over? I, I mean, I guess I would just say that given the state of the world, it's a little bit of an unprecedented, strange thing to have your show. And during that period in which we're all kind of taking time to reflect on everything. So in a way it kind of fits nicely. On the other hand, it, it's strange to um, want to talk about it in any kind of like public setting because it's just a really funny time that we're living in right now. And there are, um, there's so much happening. Everyone has a personal story, you know, around the events going on right now. So um, I'm grateful for the show. It gave us all a community and it gave us um, five years of work as, in, as actors, which I think consistently is a really rare thing in this day and age. So um, I'm just, I'm so grateful for it. Grateful for the character, grateful for to John and Sarah and to um, Lev Grossman for creating this world. So, um, I'm glad we have this opportunity to come together again and, and to, you know, give thanks for, for all of it. Awesome. Summer just yawned while you were talking. <laughs> just wanted to let you know. <laughs> I found it very interesting and passionate, <laughs> but some, Summer definitely was yawning. <laughs> Guys, whenever, give me the secret <laughs> signal. Give me the secret signal. Whenever you want me to put Trevor into the waiting room, I'll totally do it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I dare you. I do, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how about you? And then we'll get to some of our uh, fan questions that are coming in. Oh yeah, no, 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 I was with Hale. I was just saying it's like, it's kind of surreal. And then it's also, you know, it's it's great because we have this forum where we can all connect. So it's kind of, you know, it's not, it's it's over in one sense, but it's the beginning in another, you know? Awesome, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, Netflix isn't gonna get season five until December and then the show will stream for a while. So people are gonna continue to find it and respond to it how they will. And that's also the beauty of having a, a show that's that's lasted. No, 100%. And I, I, that's a great point, Hal, that it's, and, and now that we've got this time, you know what I mean? What an amazing opportunity to, to go back and watch the entire series, whether we've seen it a million times before. Right. We're <laughs> <laughs> <I> actually yawned. <laughs> You keep yawning. I'll, I will say that the fans out there are saying that your yawns are what it's all about right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Reflecting the collective unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> good mood. Let's talk. Um, one of the questions comes from, again, now that we're talking about the end of the series first, and then, you know, I'd love to go back and talk about just sort of how it came about. Um, a lot of people are asking, uh, most specifically Ryan Berg, um, and then also at Sean Siegel, is there anything that you feel, and let me just quote him directly, was there anything your character didn't get to do that you wish uh, you had gotten an opportunity to do, or um, maybe not even do, but like a storyline or, or something that you were hoping for the character that just didn't quite play out, um, in your opinion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I... I, I the show is so rich with different storylines and different character combinations. And, and like, I, I wanted more scenes with Summer and Stella and Trevor and Hale. like, there's just never enough. I didn't get enough. Um, but like, I mean, I'm sad that Alice doesn't get to ride off on the cozy horse with Quentin. Like that will always break my heart. Cause it's like one of my favorites in the book. So, you know, there's little moments like that from the books that we didn't get to do, but um, in general for me, it's just that I don't get to work with my friends anymore. Those are, there's so many unexplored things in the relationship between these characters that I'm sad we'll never get to see. Yeah, yeah, there was there was um, a moment, uh, some stuff from the source material from the books. Like, I know there was a scene with uh, Julia and um, Elliot and Margot where they they kind of, like, they're all at this bonfire. And even though there was a bonfire, it's a little bit different. It was like, uh, after a stint, it's sort of like losing losing their minds and then they come and save her, which was really cool. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Richie Bond. That would be cool. Out of rehab. Remember that? Yeah, we get out of rehab. Yeah, we break Quentin out of corporate America. It's like actually, yeah, it's one of the best parts. Yeah, that was good. That would be cool. We got to do that. But yeah, I wanted a sex scene too. I wanted just like a crazy sex scene. There weren't enough crazy sex scenes. Yeah, like just everybody, like all all the members. I didn't have no good sex scene. 
Well, I'm good. No, okay. I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, uh, how do you feel about that? Or Trevor, <laughs> as just I, uh, I, <laughs> uh, you know, this isn't really a spoiler alert, but uh, they introduced Josh going to his nephew's bar mitzvah, and I don't know if I had a brother or a sister. Yeah. And I would love to meet my nephew at some point and, uh, you know, or my sibling. So I think that could have been fun. If we saw Josh go to another bar mitzvah, that would have been a good time. You could have had a bar mitzvah heist. It would have been yeah, funny. A bar, mitzvah. a bar mitzvah heist. Oh, a bar mitzvah heist. Oh, my God. If Josh had a twin and we didn't talk about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Josh having a twin. That's kind of fun. But he, yeah. We're writing yeah, season six right now. I hope we're out yeah. getting this down. And you, right you guys are pitching all these great ideas. I'm <laughs> like, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we're just stealing these all. The, the, the... You get to work with Harvey. I never, we never. Yeah, we never got to work together. I know. I wanted him to come back to Earth. That would have been cool, like somehow just have Bennett come back to Earth and mingle with the rest of the cast, but. That's another universe, another time. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds awesome. I mean, like, because uh, Fen, obviously the character Fen gets to, but no one really else from Fillory gets to kind of go back and explore, you know, what Earth is like, which would be super. Uh, I, you know, I would have liked to explore the fact that I was a queen in Fillory, that I never got to actually be a queen. Mm -hmm. But um, How do you feel I, about that? Are you upset? <laughs> <laughs> it was three seasons ago and I'm still upset. <laughs> okay, good. Don't hold on to anything. I only got to wear the crown once. So, you know. Well, and a lot of people ask this. I know that people ask this throughout the series. Um, and obviously, folks, some folks are asking it now, specifically Chaz Gomez. Um, how, how do you feel? We've already gotten some of the feelings about it, but how do you feel about the differences? Because clearly all of you read the books and did your research, and there was a huge fan base um, of the books. And the TV show made its own choices, which, you know, you can't knock it necessarily. They were still cool and artistically creative. Um, but do you have any strong feelings either way about the differences between the book um, and the series? And I wonder, just curious, out of curiosity, how involved Lev Grossman was in the writing with the show creators? Really for anyone. I thought it, I thought it was one, I came onto the show at the end of season one and uh, I remember the, the welcome response of just having the character Josh Hoberman from the books be introduced into the show was like a really big deal. They handled it like, uh, I, you know, they handled it with care. And then I was super impressed and thought it was so cool how involved Lev was. And we all have, you know, developed a nice friendship with Lev and he feels really closely uh, with our show. And I know that we take a lot of liberties, but it's really like a tip of the hat. We had the best blueprint with these, you know, well thought out characters from his original story that, you know, television's different. You have to fill 13 episodes no matter what. So I think we took some nice liberties. I think we grabbed a lot of things from the books that, you know, were fan favorites, but also like Olivia said, we had a lot of missed opportunities. Um, if we, if we had more time, we'd have, we would have liked to uh, achieve that. But I, I like our choices and I like Lev's involvement a lot. Lev's yeah. I Oh, go ahead, Hale. Oh, sorry. No, you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say, Lev's, I think Lev's role primarily was as consultant. Um, sure. Not as writer, but I know John and Sarah sent him all the drafts of the scripts as they came in. Um, from what I understand. Just yeah, and I feel like we all had our, oh, sorry, Hale. There's like a, there's a delay on this, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it always gets a little uncomfortable, uh, awkward right. and overlapping, but you guys are doing it. <laughs> People are like, oh, um, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say is like, I, when I, when I got, when I booked the show, like it was really important to me to talk, to want to like have Lev's blessing as far as what I was doing with the character. And um, because I fell in love with the Alice in the book so much and my character, as I know every one of us did fell in love with their characters from the books. And I think all of us have had our own conversations with Lev where he tells us, you know, how much he loves what we've done with it. And all I've gotten from Lev, you know, what I've gotten the most from Lev is that it's exciting for him that he gets to see his characters go and live a different life than what he wrote or beyond what he wrote, really. And that's really fun for him. You know, he put them out in the world and now they get to grow up. And I know that that's been really entertaining and really fun for him. And um, yeah, so I don't know. It's, I, I, I love the books. My book's destroyed. And I wish we got to do every single moment in those books. But that would be like 30 seasons of television because it takes a really long time. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. By the way, Summer, yeah. everyone, have Summer, everyone is super supportive. They're saying you're yawning because you're a new mom. So congratulations, and it's okay um, <laughs> as a new mom. So congrats. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a new mom. Like, I know. I don't know why people are saying that out there. <laughs> the, fans, the, fans, the fans are. Don't worry, they're correcting them now. <laughs> Uh, what were you about to say though about um, about just the difference between the books and 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 the show? Oh, it was a joke. I was like, "Who's Lev?" <laughs> <laughs> jo Trevor, there's also a lot of love for your uh, uh, people want a Josh cookbook uh, out there. Oh, yeah, I uh, I'm working on that right now. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of frozen. Uh, reusable food during this time in quarantine. No, you know, I've been actually pretty proud of my cooking skills during the quarantine. I've, I've tapped into my Josh Oberman uh, skill set that I learned on set. You see how I did that? Skill set on set. Um, I'll, I'll start working on it. Tell the, uh, the fans should look out for a Josh Oberman cookbook. I'll, I'll contact our uh, producer, Henry Myers, who definitely had a lot of inspiration on the Josh recipes. So maybe we'll put something together. We'll put something together. A lot of you have uh, mentioned um, some of the specific scenes so far, and the fans um, are, are wondering, specifically uh, Laurel, uh, it is a very emotional show. Oh my gosh, the amount of things that these characters go through. Uh, is there a specific powerful scene um, that you remember that uh, really sticks out um, that was either really difficult to shoot or just really amazing to shoot. Again, this is from Laurel um, Briere. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. But yeah, most powerful scene that you remember from the show shooting for, for everyone. I remember season two shooting um, Alice's, spoiler alert, death with mm -hmm. the beast and that whole sequence took, uh, just was, a whole marathon for you and Charles and we were there to support and play in, in little moments here and there. But that, I remember that day just being, or two days, I don't know. It was a I really- think, I think it was like, it was two or three days and it was definitely the hardest scenes to shoot, yeah. like physically. Emotionally overwhelming for everyone. And particularly I would imagine for you and for Jason. And that was, I just remember thinking it, it was incredible how, um, consistent and how we kept the ball up in the air and how how you guys just handled that really beautifully yeah i feel like a lot of the scenes with screaming and yelling because you have to do it like 30 times at least get gets really taxing on your body and that one in particular yeah uh, for me that i think the hardest scene was uh quentin's death scene in the um uh, whatever the classroom it's yeah. all over now but yeah. it was um there was a lot of, we were shooting a lot of slow motion and those cameras we, it required us to do it a ton of times over and over. And each time I had to scream and yell and cry and fall to the floor and get grabbed and all this stuff. And after that, like your body just falls apart. And it was an emotion, very emotionally draining day, but also super fun. <laughs> Quentin's death, super fun. No? <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> there, was a, there was a scene uh, in season three, like I think the first episode where Stella and I, uh, Julia and Josh, like weirdly strike up this friendship at a rave, like a, a, ba a Bacchus, King Bacchus had a party. And in the middle of all these like naked people and bong rips, we actually had this... Um, it was it was just a quick moment of her explaining that she had magic and Josh at the time was so depleted, didn't really know what his sense of purpose was in life if, if magic didn't exist. And it was this little sort of in between moment between two friends that she was like, I need to I need to show this guy, even if it's just to show him that I have a little bit of magic to show him some hope wound up being one of my favorite scenes I've ever filmed uh, just because it it felt real. It felt like, you know, this was a moment where two people got to introduce themselves to each other and she was being vulnerable by by letting me into that secret. And I was being vulnerable by telling her that I, uh, you know, miss making magical tomatoes. So it was a nice, it was a nice moment uh, for me. Awesome, awesome. I think for me, uh, I mean, the Benedict, like uh, jumping off the ship, Mm. And the way you took that storyline, because that's not what happens to Benedict in the books. And so when that happened, uh, which I refer to as like the suicide um, episode, just because all this time we didn't know what was really going on in his head. And when you put that key in his hand, you see that he may have it all together and he's so structured and so like, you know, 
um, perfect in his work, but also um, is dealing with, uh, you know, um, some demons of his own. And uh, unfortunately for him, he comes off the ship. So it was really like hard to shoot that scene and the response that I got from the fans and how, um, you know, at the end of that episode, we had the suicide hotline um, prevention number. And uh, it was just really like, wow, it was really hard just to to dive into that part of Benedict because I never saw that for him. I always saw like, he's just going to make maps. He's just going to show up to work mm-hmm. and he's like, I'm doing my job. And then when you put, um, when you ask him for the truth, you know, so you, you really got to check in on your friends and see that uh, everything's going on, um, that they're okay. So it was really uh, important for me to dive into that. So I like that. Awesome. Summer, Stella? The most difficult scene was probably my scene in the tent in season four when she goes on her desert quest. Just like physically, that was probably the hardest, but it was also like the most rewarding. Um, So that was cool. But physically, that whole episode was pretty hard. And then particularly that scene. Um, But they didn't make me do it over and over again, which was cool. But I also wanted to do it over and over again. (laughs) I was like, wait, I want another take. I would definitely say the sexual assault uh, with Reynard in season one was pretty, pretty intense. Yeah. And And we did have to do. And we, it was still season one of the show. So we kind of, we had a different showrunner at the time who uh, not, you know, I don't, yeah, is long gone. Thank God we got, he got replaced by Chris Fisher, who's great, but he was kind of a mess. And so he had to shoot that scene in pieces and just like, uh, I, we were there till like three in the morning. It was brutal. Um, that was rough. And also just like what we were doing in it of itself, you know, so not just the technical stuff, but like what it was in itself. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to portray something like that and, and keep it true to form and, you know, be in it too. So, um, but it was important and it was, I, you know, I was happy with how it came out afterwards and Mackenzie Aston was an awesome scene partner. And, um, you know, we, we teamed up with rain and I know that their call center went up by 70% after that. So that was an important one. It was good. No, that's a great and point. Mackenzie was like the nice is like the nicest guy <laughs> ever. Like what an incredible actor he is. He's just the nicest guy. No, no, like I can't. I'm like, we get, we got this. Like we can do. It. He's like, I feel terrible. I'm like, I know it's okay. Like, like we're gonna, like it's gonna be okay. He's yeah. great. Isn't that that always, always the way the villains are, are always just like the nicest people in real life, <laughs> and that's what's so amazing about uh, their ability as actors. And you know, shout out uh, two points that you both made, uh, Harvey and Stella. I think what. Uh, was amazing about the show and why it's touched so many people's lives. If it really did uh, deal with real issues, you know, in in relation to a magical world. Um, but and you know, all certain individuals aside, you know, the the show did do a great job of partnering, like you said, with with different organizations and and having those hotlines up there. So uh, because it's important to address those things, those are real world problems and as you know and i think they're addressed very well in the show and i think a lot of people's lives were changed because of the show just seeing from the fan reaction so again thank you all um for being a part of that um that's a credit to our creators uh john and sarah and you know we we tackled a lot of issues and they were always ready to deal with any sort of reaction so i, I that's a big shout out to our creators and showrunners john sarah and chris and whatnot everyone who was part of that decision making and sci-fi, sci-fi for even letting us talk about that kind of storyline. They, they really didn't really hold any grudges on anything. Well, you guys set the bar. I mean, that, that you know, sci-fi before that was, you know, doing different types of work, you know, and now uh, you really, between the, the language and then the, the, the sexual situations and such, and just the hard um, hitting circumstances, uh, you really paved the way for a lot of cable shows, you know what I mean? And, and what can, can and can't be done um, on cable, so. Um, again, again, that's why we why we love it so much. So, thank you. We also opened up the platform for talking bunnies. They had a really hard time <laughs> getting acting work before our show, but we really gave them a good platform as well. <laughs> Where's the hotline for bunnies? You know what I mean? The well, yeah, where is that talking bunny hotline? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I found out I was allergic to bunnies working on this show. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that scene on the ship, you know, I think, I, I don't that. know, I was like, Alice 23, and I'm surrounded by bunnies, and I'm crying, yeah. a typical scene, and like, I broke out in hives, which is really easy for me to do, but I was terribly allergic to bunnies, which is an awful <laughs> thing to be find laughing. out. That was incredible. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> I was crying because it, you know, <laughs> it's so bad. 
That's why you can't be queen. That's why you can't be queen because you can't get the messenger bunnies, Olivia. You also happen to have like the longest monologue, but there was 18 bunnies making so much noise around you. We were standing in the background while they Yeah, I had like six pages of dialogue. Never happens on a show. And and Mira, our director, was just so lovely and patient. And I, oh, bunnies were just shitting and running and scratching. Yeah, yeah, that was great. I miss the bunnies. Well, no, then what a good segue. I, I miss the bunnies. I'll hashtag I miss the bunnies. Um, th- that's what's so amazing about the show too, though, is, you know, you have, we, have, we were talking about all this serious stuff, but then it can flip the coin, you know, like immediately flip the penny um, and like be this hilarious, very heartwarming, um, tongue in, not maybe tongue in cheek is the wrong phrase, you know what I mean? But very self-aware um, and comical show. Obviously one of the most, uh, amazing uh episodes four four or five of them we got um were the musical episodes everyone's dying to know um specifically let's see who i got here coming up next that's like my one regret i, I wanted to be in a musical episode so bad oh, oh you've so been bad. so good so bad and I, I asked sarah i asked i was like is it possible it's like if we'll see and it's like because it wouldn't make sense and like i was like please the one episode <laughs> i'm a musical theater nerd yeah, let's hear it. Let's, let's hear about those musical um, words. The one that stand out is like being your favorite. Um, Mary 613K is asking, Laurie Ruff is asking, um, what, was, what was it like? I'd love to hear from, from you, Hal, first as the, the end summer, as the, the first musical number. Uh, and then I know we get all about Josh, which was just a blast for everyone. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit of just about your experiences with the musical episodes and, and how much fun they were for, at least from our perspective as fans, we had a blast watching them. Yeah. I was really terrified to do Under Pressure. I think I'm still terrified to do Under Pressure um, or that it, that, it's, that it exists. Like, it's a terrifying proposition, I think. It just general. shut down. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Fun with Don't Get Me Wrong in the Desert Quest. I think that was the most fun to shoot because I was working with Alex, who's. Um, happens to be Trevor's wife and is one of our incredible choreographers. And she really made that really fun, beautiful. It was the one day that wasn't torrential downpour rain on the Desert Quest episode in which we were shooting on like five or six days on location there. They created a desert quarry. I don't know how they, I mean like tons and tons of sand, they just piled onto this rock quarry to pass for a desert. And, um, you know, I got to, um, you know, do Alex's choreography <laughs> on this weird dune thing, which was, it was just a very, I actually remember it being a very beautiful day and, and a really fun experience that day. So oh. I, yeah, I had fun with that, a lot of fun with that. Say, Hale, I remember in New York, we were there for press or something and you and I walked to get a coffee and you were like, so they want us to sing Bowie or or you particular, because I wasn't a part of the, but you're like Bowie, or no, I was, what am I talking about? You're like Bowie and fucking Freddie Mercury. You were like, what the fuck? And I was like, it's gonna be great. But I just remember, cause it's like two of like the most iconic, like how can anybody ever do it justice? You know, like. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they can't, <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> what about that first one? The, uh, the Les Mis uh, sequence, One Day More. That was so cool. Mogley, oh our costume designer, built this awesome um, blue like ensemble. And I was like, I don't need pantyhose. I have thigh high boots. And there was like a crazy wind chill. And, like, I was just so angry about how cold I was that I just channeled it into my performance. <laughs> Josh, you had a whole- get up. I mean, I keep calling you Josh. My gosh, I just, I know and I love you. It's okay. That <laughs> happens a lot. No, that ha- that happens. I, I, have the, I have the face for it. It's okay. I'm Josh. It's fine. Um, yeah, no, I got, I got really lucky with having that episode uh, come at a very, like, I, I've never really talked about this, so why not share it with, like, a bunch of random fans online <laughs> and you people right now. That's that cool. episode, uh, so I, there's, like, episodes off for some of our characters. You know, we only are allowed to do a certain minimum, and I was off uh, two or three episodes consecutively at that time. My dad happened to pass away during that time, and the first 
bit of work I ever, and I really wanted to get back to work and I really wanted, uh, and, and everything's okay. I'm not bringing that up in, in a sad way. I'm bringing it up at how nice working with people, uh, that you consider family can be and like the gifts that jobs have. Mm. The first episode that I had back was a musical episode called all that Josh at a time that I needed like the biggest distraction of my life. It was an episode that was centered around uh, my character, and it was a musical where you have to sing and dance. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was in this mourning process, but I couldn't have been happier that I had this gift. And the writers knew, and I, I spoke to John about it just recently, and he mentioned on a, another Comic-Con panel that him and Sarah both lost their uh, dads at an early age, like, at, like, uh, or lost their parents at a very, you know, untimely time. And we never talked about that, but it was this certain, certain sense of them being there for me. And I, I can't believe at how amazing our show pulls off the commitment level that a musical episode takes. And we do it within the same amount of time that every episode has. So it, it, it's a really cool feat to be able to say that we pull these things off, but also the musicals are an emotional thing for us. We really commit everything to it. And I couldn't be happier that we had the opportunity to do that stuff. So that's my personal experience with it. And I've never really told anybody about that, but it, it, it was, um, it was a nice moment for me. Well, and that's what the show's all about, right? Is it the individuals, um, you know, being stuck in your individual moments, but then coming together as a group of people to support, um, as friends and things like that. Yeah. It looked like you were going to say something, Olivia. Oh, I, I look like that a lot, but I did. Um, I was going to say that um, the musical episodes to me are my favorite part of the show. And they weren't at first because I'm terrified of singing in front of people and I've never done it. And it was like a lot of conversations with John and Sarah about, I really don't want to fucking sing on this show. Um, you're not going to make me do this. And then I had to, and then it be, quickly became my favorite thing because the rehearsal process and recording process and like then getting to act with what you've already created just added all elements to art that this this art I've been doing for so long that I've never done before and this other form of expression through a character that I'd never done before and I found a different version of Alice version 572 of Alice while singing with her and um, in the final season I got to do a lot of singing in um, episode I think it's 11 with uh, Hail which we recorded yeah. the the Kate Bush Peter Gabriel song and it's I, that was my favorite experience on the show um, I mean first of all Kate Bush is like one of my heroes. So that was such an honor. And um, just working with Hale and getting to experience such an emotional thing. Singing is such a vulnerable place. And so is acting, but singing is a whole nother level. And getting to do that was, uh, I don't know, literally the highlight of my career so far. So Hale, I love you and thank you for that. Yeah, that, singing that song was so special for us and your voice is so beautiful and so, good. so natural. I don't yeah, know. it was awesome. They're such beautiful moments. And again, you can't see the, the chats right now, but people just the outpouring of love for the musical episodes. Um, and 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 people are upset, not upset. They're giving you some love, Hale. They said you were great. That was their favorite um, of all time. So don't feel bad about Under Pressure. <laughs> um, they love it. Not bad. I just, you know, it's like a, like a devotional respect to the idols of, you know. Would you say you were under pressure to deliver a good performance? <laughs> yeah. That's an assessment. <laughs> so awesome. So awesome. Was there, there's a, a ton of people. Some of these um, next ones are just more about, you know, fun set moments. I'd love to, to chat a little about those. A uh, ton, ton of people would love to know, because there were so many cool, the thing with fantasy and sci-fi series is, my gosh, the costumes, the sets, you know, the, the, the worlds that are created are so beautiful and amazing. And Electric Purple 9, Sarah Levitt 5, uh, Shannon Worley of 203, I know there's a bunch of you out there, are just curious if there's anything costume-wise, set-wise, and kind of combining a bunch of questions um, that, you, that particularly stood out to you as being amazing. And if there's anything that you can say here on camera, that you took from set uh, home with you as, as a memento for the show. Mm. I stole it all. What was this summer? I stole it all. I got my crown. I got my axes. I got my whole wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> got it all my oh, I can show you all the stuff I stole. Wait, no. <laughs> Go get it. Why we talked to everyone else, Summer. They're coming after you. <laughs> Once this quarantine's done, they are going to knock down your door. I got my welter's outfit. I stole it. <gasps> oh. 
I love the Walker's outfit. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> I only stole my Alice dress, like my classic Alice dress, because that one is iconic to me. I would love to burn my Niffin dress because I wore it for <laughs> an entire season. And anybody, you guys know, you have to wear those outfits for like 16 hours a day, five days a week. So that was brutal. Um, yeah, I want to fucking burn that dress. But it looked, it looked great. I just can't. I always think about that with Penny and his suit for uh, when he's in that suit, like nonstop for, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it anyone else? smell bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've actually packed up the physical kids cottage. I still want to claim items from that. Mm -hmm. that. If it isn't all said and done, who knows? We have to talk to Matthew probably about that. <laughs> no one has the Tada sign, right? People are asking specifically about the Tada sign. Oh no, I'm sure it's- Oh, they're not gonna give us that. <laughs> Was Super shout out to our costume costume department and, and set decorating team. I mean, they they really, the way they turn around things, like they're making suits hours before we wear them. And uh, it, it was just super impressive. I mean, at some point, the alterations were like really, uh, yeah, up to the day. I remember, the only thing I could say is, is that Fillory notoriously doesn't have pockets in their pants. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know what came over me, but I decided to make a big, well, not a medium sized stink that I'm a pocket actor <laughs> and I like to put my hands in my pockets because I need a place to put them. And sure enough, the next day, uh, the costume department made me pockets in all my fillery pants. It was the best thing ever. Wow. That's my little shout out. I didn't even get to steal those pockets, but I would if I could. <laughs> Summer, maybe you could steal them for me. Somehow you are the ninja. Now I'm going to get busted. Yeah, you are. That's for sure. <laughs> Summer, can I make you feel better? I wanted to steal the little thing that Benedict wears as a pin. The original one got lost. And so when I got back, they had made one and it had like uh, the tree from the moonchuck inside of it. And it was really cool. And I was like, oh my God, can I keep this when we're done? And they're like, yeah, when we wrap. And I was like, okay. And then I never got it. Now that's my. You should just check it. Summer's house. Just check Summer's yeah, apartment. Summer, oh, I think that's probably there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. it all. <laughs> Selling it all on eBay, <laughs> making a killing. <laughs> Selling Hale's underwear. So you, started, you started to say something, Stella, a little while ago, and just got cut off a little bit. Um, any anything from your end? Costumes, sets, props? Oh, no, I just asked Hale if he took any of his in any of his wardrobe. Mm. Yeah, want to steal Hale's. That's what I asked. I was like, did you say, did you end up taking From the end of season one and the beginning of season two, when we first go to Philly, I have one of those. Mm. And I have um, um, the pair of pants that went with that outfit. And um, I believe I have the cloak from season three that was very um, like velvet. The like, velvet one? Yeah. I might, I might be getting, I don't know. I might be getting that at some point at some point, because that was the one thing that I was like, if I could have one thing, that would be my thing. Yeah. I have a great photo of Hale. Just a few weeks ago, uh, we went to the writer's room uh, before quarantine, uh, and they let us take like, you know, some show posters or whatever we wanted. And the season four poster is Hale as the monster, like just pointing with like blood dripping. And there's a huge poster of it. They were like, do you want, he's like, yeah. And it's completely framed, and he's we're walking out of the office together, and it's just Hale holding Hale as like the monster, <laughs> and it's uh, amazing. Hale, I'm gonna have to send that to you. It's pretty perfect. Badly to walk through doors, <laughs> every which way doesn't fit. <laughs> and the car, which was yeah, the process. He knew things I Hale. About yeah, how to move things into cars. <laughs> You're welcome. At least I could do. Oh, that was, fun. Yeah. Uh, that was so much fun, Tre uh, Trevor, watching that with you, uh, picking everybody up in the car. That was great. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and then just shout out, Trevor, you, met, you mentioned everyone's kind of said the same thing. Um, they always get forgotten, um, the the creators, right? The set designers, the costume designers, um, the writers, my gosh, like to make a show like that, uh, it's with all that fantasy and all that sci-fi and bring, you know, text to life. Um, shout out to all those folks, um, because my gosh, amazing, amazing work. Out. Thank you for the work. With Absolutely. Them. Yeah. They gave you pockets. They gave you pockets, Trevor. You know? They gave me pockets. Yeah. <laughs>
Was there, we talked about choreography a little earlier uh, with the musical episodes, and I, I don't know specifically, and you, you obviously do, was it the same choreographer? Because we have a bunch of questions about um, your favorite tut. This comes from Mary as well. Um, your favorite magical tut. What an intricate, cool thing that they came up with, you know, to make magic scientific, but also beautiful. Did you have a favorite tut out there? Um, and how was it like working with the, the choreography with that and kind of syncing up? Flying the moon. Destroy. Oh yeah, what was that one? The hail and <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of this. <laughs> no, it reminded me of it reminded me of that scene in Wedding Crashers when when Vince Vaughn pretends to have lost, like he can't hear and he can't speak, and he's like he's like talking to Owen Wilson, and he's like. You know, like, you know, okay, we'll have the cakes, and then we'll buy it. Like, that's what you and Marina were like. It was our cakes. Star on our palm. We have to like gather it and then draw a star and then drag the. <laughs> this, this action felt. You know, like but we did have a set. We had a we had a separate tuck choreographer to answer your question. Kevin uh, Kevin Lee mm -hmm. um, was our tuck choreographer from day one, and he is like a world champion tutter. And he he <laughs> sends us videos and shows up on set to make sure that we're doing it right. And I mean, I've never been able to do his tuts justice. I have very the dexterity that that it needed. I, I would just with my face, I would <laughs> yeah. cut it. And uh, you know, but he's extremely talented, and we were really lucky to add that element to the show. Um, I, I remember before, like before we shot the show, before the pilot. Sarah had emailed all of us videos of tutting because in the book it just says in like intricate hand movements or something sure. like that. And like didn't think twice about that. And then we booked the show and then she sends us this email that has all these YouTube videos of people tutting. And she's like, this is what it's going to look like. And I was like, call my agents. I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this. Like on my hand, I can't like <laughs> done. No. Cause it was like the most incredible and none of us are that good. Hale might be, Oh, I yeah. think Hale's the best. I'm the worst. Well, Olivia, all those Rhineman, the windy, throwy things that you, I don't know. Oh, I can do that stuff. Oh, or like my nipple twisting, but. Nipple twisting. <laughs> or tuts. I didn't do that much magic over the five years. Oh. You know, like looking back. But yeah, I there, there wasn't hmm. enough magic. Yeah, Olivia did a bunch. I know Stella, you had a ton as well. Um, any, any hard ones to, uh, stand out to you, Stella? Gosh, yeah. They were all really all cool. of them. They were <laughs> in the beginning of the series, like it was really cool and I loved how delicate it was and sure. it was awesome and, and we got to like experiment with some really cool. And then as the series progressed, it became like voguing. And it was like <laughs> voguing meets pop and lock. <laughs> like, this is not like I don't I can't like I don't know what's happening, but I, there's no way I can do this and not look like a fool. <laughs> there was and a nice part as the series progresses we're supposed to be getting better with magic so i'm like okay <laughs> i don't know i don't know, I don't know well, there was a nice part we all got like it, there was a point like in the beginning of the series like we all were doing our own separate tuts and then like the last two seasons there was so much cooperative magic mm. that we had to call each other on that tuts wrong i mean it was excruciating to get the timing of the tut <laughs> down with everybody i'm like you're doing that with your index finger i'm not doing that with my index finger what are you doing yeah it's crazy yeah. i liked the daintier like more yeah. like you know whimsical like sparkly ballerina like yeah. i like that yeah i'm oh. good at dainty yeah the world seed one was tough the world seed one looked hard <laughs> I, I blacked out. I don't even remember it. By that time, we had tutted so much as a team. Like, I was, I don't know what was happening. I'm going to have to explode a wall in the last season. <laughs> I was like, hey, girl, what's that tuck going to look like? <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> the wall exploded, and we had to get it in one take. And it was it was just it was just a reflection of Margot's extreme power. It was. It was <laughs> <laughs> I all my tuts because I never got the emails for the tuts, and, and so I would just make mine up on the day. So you stole everything and you made up the tuts. <laughs> oh, the things you learn on, on Zoom calls. Well, no, when you get better as a magician, you don't have to do as much, right? So yeah, she's just more powerful. Yeah. <laughs> force brute force.
We've spent entirely too much time on Tuts. No offense, everybody. Harvey, were you were you jealous of the Tuts as much as you were of the musical episodes? I was jealous because I love to dance. And <laughs> you know, when's my turn? Like, you know. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, uh, what would like, you know, Benedict, like if he ever got the chance, it'd probably be like something very <laughs> it would be kind of bogey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, unfortunately out of time. My gosh, we could talk about this show uh, all day long. Um, and I know people do and people love it. And so again, um, I, I'm speaking for all the fans out there uh, with all the hearts and all the love that's going out there. Thank you so much for, for giving us this amazing uh, series and, and really doing it justice. I would love to just go around and you know, just any final things you want to shout out to folks um, who are watching. We've got thousands and thousands of people. Most of them are begging for season six or, or a movie. You don't have to talk about that if you want to, you can. Uh, but just, I, I know we're living in some tough times and people really appreciate uh, what you're doing with them right now and giving them that little break uh, from, from reality. And so just everyone get a little shot here to just give your final sort of sentiments to your fans and, and the audience out there. Um, I, I, I mean, none of this is possible without fans. So the fact that we have people watching our show and that we're able to communicate with you guys during this tough time, just know that, uh, your voices are heard and you're not alone in any of these situations. And I'm just so glad that we're able to have a common thing to bond over. This show has really meant a lot to all of us. So thank you for all the support and uh, can't wait to meet you guys very soon. Thanks Trevor. I was just going to say that some during this, you know, crazy, bizarre time, some days uh, you're going to be really productive and other days you might just not, be at all you know you might just be like surviving but every day that you're just like staying in and taking care of yourself and your loved ones is is a win so just head up and we will come out of this it's just it, it's just a matter of when love you guys thank you yeah um i love you guys and it was so much fun to do this today and to see all of you guys um so yeah i hope everyone's staying inside and not going too crazy <laughs> I'm going crazy. <laughs> I'm yeah. a lot anyway. My life was quarantined before quarantine, so I feel like I was prepared. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to the fans. You guys have, this is the first time I've ever felt um, such love. Like when I joined this cast and got to like meet you guys at cons and whatnot have always been probably my favorite thing about um, doing these things, like going to cons because the Magicians has been such a great show and um, just to be a small part of it has been such an honor. So thank you to the fans. Thank you to you guys, the cast who will always welcome me and uh, thanks for having me. We'll be doing the shadows season two on Hulu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plug. Plug. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everyone who's shown up today and who, who I'll be seeing very shortly. Um, and thank you um, on behalf of uh, the charity that I'm donating to. Um, you guys are making a, a big impact specifically with queer families in need. So thank you, thank you. Um, it's just a really beautiful turnout and I'm, I'm so, so grateful. Um, so thanks. Um. I just want to thank the fans. You guys are the most amazing group of people I've ever gotten, had the honor to meet. And I want to thank you guys so much for the amount of times that I've, I've been in a dark place or felt lonely or unseen and you guys have shown up for me and I can't thank you enough. And um, <laughs> times are weird right now. And, and I'm so grateful that I get to see my friends right now. I miss all of you guys. And I wish the whole cast was here. And uh, hi, mom. This is the first time my mom's been able to go to a con. So that's pretty dope. And uh, I love you. That's been, um, that's a great point, uh, Olivia. A lot of fans, uh, even when we're back to, to back to normal um, and we have these conventions, we're able to see each other in person. A lot of folks, you know, are in different countries and different uh, parts of the world and aren't able to meet that, uh, make those. And so this has been awesome. And there's so much love from around the world as well. Um, so again, thank you all for being here. They, people want us thank to you. sing under pressure, but it's impossible to sing in unison uh, on Zoom. So we're going to save you from that. Um, a quick reminder, you can still buy those one-on-one -on -one video chats uh, with these individuals. If you have uh, more individual moments or questions you'd like to 
chat with them about. Uh, those are still on sale. And so uh, if you're able to, please um, do that now and you'll get an email with a link to that. Um, but without further ado, please help me in virtually applauding standing ovation um, for this amazing cast and check out The Magicians. It's all on Netflix. Um, and then the last season's on sci-fi. Check out Harvey's uh, What We Do in the Shadows. We uh, are so excited for all the things that you're all doing. One more big round of applause for Harvey, Trevor, Stella, Olivia, Summer, and Hale, the cast of The Magicians, everybody. Thanks, folks. Thanks for coming Thanks, out. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Thanks, Bye. Bye guys. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.